Hey, this is B from Kong Zero Us, and today we're going to be modding our Marvel vs. Capcom 2 control panel with new buttons because these stock buttons are a must go. If you plan on playing competitively in any space online, you definitely want to upgrade at least the buttons. We'll talk about the sticks in a future video, but let's talk about these buttons and why they are terrible for versus games, especially Marvel vs. Capcom or vs. Capcom 2. This is one of the stock arcade one-up buttons, and when we say that they're mushy, look at how loose this top is and how long you have to press this to actually get to the micro switch press. So this micro switch is a decent bow main uh, style micro switch that doesn't have any clicking noises, very similar to a sand wall, but these are just terrible feeling because they're super mushy on top, and when you are pressing buttons for a super, once you do a super and you're button mashing, the raised concave edges here are actually sharper than even your standard HAP or IL buttons. So this does not feel good when you're doing button mashing for a versus game after doing a super. So this is definitely something you need to do to be able to get more damage. You can do this if you want to, probably more effective, but old school people in the arcade are definitely button mashing this way. And so we're gonna be changing out our player one sticks because right now this is the stick that you play with online. You hardly use the player two stick online at all because when you're playing one player, you can be the player one or two sides. So if anything, all you need to do is change out these six buttons and you'll be good. Now you have lots of options to upgrade your buttons. I just did a video about them, but let's go over them again. So one of your most common options is the HAP or IL concave style buttons that you see here, which are your classic arcade buttons that you might have remembered playing in the arcade. Great option here. I recommend DX uh, D44X Cherry Micro Switches, which are 75 grams of weight, or Zippy, which are a little bit lighter. When you press the feel, it feels much better. It's not as mushy, pretty solid, great quality uh, buttons. And when you're button mashing, they don't feel the best for button mashing. You might be doing this a little bit more, but this clicking sound here, you still do have to press it to be able to feel that tactile feedback. And so for folks that remember that, this might be a really good option for you playing these concave ones. On the right, these are very similar HAP IL convex buttons, which have a rounded top on them, very similar quality, same style micro switch that I have here, a cherry micro switch. Button mashing on these feels much better, so this is a great option for folks that like that clicking micro switch sound and want a convex HAP or IL style button there. The only issue about installing it into your cabin is that it uses these micro switches with a 0.187 inch uh, terminal here, so you do have to do some modding to be able to get this into your encoder there, but that's the D40. 4x cherry micro switch there um, so while they are really nice feeling for classic style arcade feels it does take more work to get it installed into your panel now here's my final recommendation for what you want to upgrade these buttons to uh, genuine sand wall parts are really easy to find online on amazon or several different arcade retailers and the biggest thing you can tell there are sand wall logos here that you want to check micro switches feel really good they're very rounded on the edges here and there's such a short throw to be able to uh, press the button for it to register. These are really tactile. You want to be able to press it really quickly and then, uh, you know, register that input. And again, the other benefit is that this is a stock Arcade 1UP button here. It uses the exact same size terminal here and that way you could just easily swap it without having to do any extra work. Um, the, the size of these are also very similar as well. These are 30 millimeter holes and we just have to do a really slight bod to be able to get these to fit perfectly and I'm going to show you how to do that after we take the buttons out of this. All right, let's start by flipping over your control panel on the back and you'll see the black cover here. All you need to do are remove the screw covers here, 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 as well as the top two that are on the top there. This should lift off fairly easily. And then what I'm gonna have you do is stick this plastic part on the bottom so that you can stick your joysticks in it and it gives you a nice little working surface. The other thing you might wanna do is remove the actual bat tops and the plexi cover. You're more than welcome to do so to protect it so you don't damage anything else. Next off, we're going to unplug all the different wires for these buttons. This is the player one side right here on the left because I just flipped it over. So you wanna double check and make sure which side you're working on. Uh, these little terminals here are a little bit tricky to pull off. Sometimes they get a little bit stuck. All you need to do is grab a flathead screwdriver and it just lifty kind of help you gently pull it off on each one. And in that way you'll be able to pull them off without damaging them and then remember where they're at. So another thing you can do is you can take pictures or label them so you have the right ones connected. Otherwise you're gonna have to remember where they're at. So go ahead and take a visual of where these are at. Label them if you'd want to. Um, but if you do a quick swap out, the, the length should be very similar to where they're at currently. All right, now that we have all of our wires removed, all we need to do is take these two little um, tabs here and pinch them, and they're going to pop right on out. So we're just gonna pop these right on out for each one. 
All right, so let's just do a quick dry fit of one of the soundbar buttons that we're going to install. So you can see how they uh, they fit currently, and there's slightly a little bit of an issue. So these are 30 millimeter sandwalls that are actually meant to go into kind of metal casings. But when you put it in and try to press it in, it's a little bit of a tight fit and it gets stuck right around that last bit there. And so you can force it in. I forced these in before, but it definitely can cause stress on your board. Uh, you know, I've heard about some people actually breaking their boards. So you definitely don't want to press it in and put it in. We're going to do a simple fix to be able to get all of these to fits here. So this sand wall here has some extra nubs that are right there on each of the sides. All we are going to do is take our uh, X-Acto knife. You can sand this down as well. We're just going to cut off a little bit of the edge right there using an X-Acto knife. Um, one of my friends, Bobby Vu, actually took one of these and just used a little bit of a sander or a grinder or a Dremel and just sanded off these edges to make it fit too. So shout out to Bobby Vu to die for mods. You should definitely check out his channel. But you can just take this with an X-Acto knife. Take your time, be a little bit careful and just shave off all four of these little nubs right there with an X-Acto and then it's it's gonna fit perfectly. So let's go ahead and get this back in so we can test it. I like to have these all kind of the same direction so that way, you know, maybe this top part here is, is a little bit closer to the micro switch. And we're gonna stick this in. Or actually, I'm gonna have these nubs here on the side to go in there. And then it's going to fit perfectly right in there with no issues at all. There's enough tension for it to stay in place. It's solid in there. You don't need to do any other modding. You don't have to widen this at all. Just rub off those nubs and you'll be able to get all of them in. So let's go ahead and finish that off. All right, now that they're all shaven, we're gonna go ahead and place these in. Again, I'm going to um, have them all facing kind of on the right side. And we're gonna press them in gently and hopefully they should all fit. No problem. All right, and we're all done. So you really do have your choice of colors for sound wall buttons that you want to. So you can pick whatever you want to. These are just extra sound wall buttons that I had. I probably will change them out to match on both sides. But for now, player one sound wall buttons are pretty much all you need to do. Let's get these reconnected on the other side. All right, so flipping back this back over again one more time to our player one side, we have all of our sound wall buttons here. Um, so all you need to do is just reconnect all the ones that were in the same areas as the old ones and we should be able to get started. And for these actually the wiring doesn't matter because you're just closing the loop so it doesn't matter which side you put them on, you just need to connect them. No issues if you mix or match them, just make sure that they get to the right order so that way you can remember where they're at. Refer back to the picture that you took or if you labeled them that would be even better but otherwise you should be able to quickly add them back to the same places that they were before. Snapped right on to these sandwall connectors. All right, and we're all done reconnecting our Samba buttons. This is gonna be a huge upgrade for you in terms of performance. The stick we're gonna talk about in a little bit. These are actually really good Samba clones and in a future video, I'm gonna tell you exactly the reasons why. So you can get away with playing the stock stick for a little while before you upgrade them. But for now, this Samba clone button plus these Samba buttons are going to give you the best advantage to be able to play competitively in any of the online scenes, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 once it gets live, NBC1, I will see you in the lobby. Let's go ahead and test this out. All right, so once you get your deck reinstalled again, you're gonna wanna retest all your buttons to make sure the functionality is there. So we put this back into our Marvel's Capcom 2 cabinet. We're gonna go ahead and select some of our characters. I still have a lot of work to do to be able to learn this game effectively. Um, but right now, here's my current team, Spider-Man, uh, Doctor Doom, and Morgan are my team for the moment. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to rock with these guys, but we will see how it works out. So let's make sure we test all of our punch buttons and our kick buttons that they're in the right spot again after rewiring it. You definitely wanna check that out. So we've got our low low punch and then our, our high, high punch and then our first assist, that's good, that's Doom. This is low kick, this is the high kick, and then this is our second assist there. So we got all six buttons in the right place, and then automatically, I feel so much better really quickly. So you, for you're doing your magic series, being able to press those buttons very quickly really makes a difference compared to these mushy buttons. So even though I'm getting owned by this computer right now, you will feel the difference immediately once you start putting in the work to be able to get good on this game. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, <laughs> let me check out this computer real fast before I end the video, because otherwise it's just gonna be embarrassing. Oh my goodness, all right.
That's button mashing at its finest right there. That felt so much better than what I was doing the first time. Alright, ready for the final? Bring everybody out. Bring everybody out. Let's go. Button mash! Feels so good! Oh, these buttons feel so much better than the stock ones. It's definitely a huge upgrade. It only costs you about 15 bucks or so to get a set of six Salma buttons. Easy swap out, no particular issues with choosing the same buttons, and you'll be good to go in about five minutes or so. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm on my way to 10,000 subs, and we'll see you on the leaderboards online. Find me on NBC1. I will see you there.